fly with a friend that asked if we had to do the same pre-flight every time. It took so long. And I asked him, I said, what part of the aircraft malfunctioning are you comfortable with? And I'll skip that part and it'll go faster. And uh, he acquiesced and we ended up doing the pre-flight. So pre-flight is pretty important. In a car, if something goes wrong, you can pull over to the side of the road, fix it, get somebody to come look at it. Obviously in the air, five, 6,000 feet, that's not gonna happen. So it is an important thing to do. Now, this is the checklist in here. Uh, are all the things we're supposed to look at on the outside, the inside of the plane before we take off. And notice I called it a checklist. It's not a to-do list. Obviously, when you're a new pilot, you're gonna have to go line, line by line and do every item one at a time and go through it, and it's gonna take a while. But as you get more experience, you should be able to go around the plane, check all the items, and then come back and just go through the checklist to make sure you didn't miss anything. This is gonna do a few things for you. One is, you're less likely to miss something because you're not going down line by line and have your finger skip a few items and, and move on. The other is you're looking at the plane more than you're looking at the book. So you might see something that's not specifically on the checklist, but it needs to be corrected or addressed. So as you go along through your training, I would work on this checklist. And I see most students don't. They come back and we start the same way every time. I've had students take over an hour to get from this stage to takeoff just because we go through every line item and they're just not familiar with the list. So get familiar with it, use it as a checklist, not a to-do list, and things will go a little smoother for you. So I'm gonna take you through the pre-flight the way I do it. I'm gonna go around the plane, I'm gonna check everything, then I'll come back to my checklist, make sure I got everything. And there's a few things that aren't in checklists that I do. Some of them have to do with logging the times for the flight school, but uh, we're gonna go through it and then, um, and then we'll check our checklist and see how I did. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're, then we're gonna turn the battery on. We can't check the fuel or the tack time without the G1000 running, so we need to get that going. And while we're waiting for that to boot up, we're gonna turn all our lights on. And then we go check all our uh, wingtip lights and make sure everything's working. When we come back, this should be booted. All right, position lights work, and strobe is working on the right left wing. All right, position strobe on the right wing, all good to go. All right, now the G1000 is uh, pretty much booted up. We have to hit the enter button to get the MFD to continue. And then we're gonna hit the engine button and we're gonna check our fuel quantities and we're gonna check our tack time. All right, we also wanna check and make sure that our uh, documents are in order, airworthiness, registration, they're all right here. All right, so we're not adding fuel for this flight, so we don't have to wait for a fuel truck. So we're gonna go ahead and sump, uh, check our fuel. There's three spots. There's one under each wing, and there's one under the center of the fuselage. All right, the one under each wing, is actually down here right over the wheel. We're just gonna push our, just gonna push our gauge in, get a little fuel, check it for color, make sure there's no junk in it. And then we'll come over here and we'll come right into the center one and do the same thing. You can see our fuel is blue, There's nothing in it, don't see any water, and it smells like fuel. So we'll go over there, we're gonna put this back in the tank, and then we'll keep going. All right, we're gonna be checking the wing for any damage, any cracks, dings, stall strip. It's right here, it is on our list to check. We're coming along now down. This hole here is for our stall horn. We wanna make sure that it's clear, there's nothing in there. And we'll just continue on down the wing, looking for any kinds of signs of damage or any anomalies. Another stall strip down here. Fuel cap is on and pointed in the right direction. It is pointed towards the back of the plane. We've already checked all our lights. We'll come down here and we're going to check our pitot tube. Make sure both the ram air hole and the drain hole are clear. While we're in here, we're just going to take a quick look around. Make sure we don't see anything else. All right. Looks like all our screws are in our wingtip and everything's good there. All right, we're gonna come along. We have two static wicks coming out the wingtip. Discharge any static buildup on the wing. All right, make sure that our aileron is free and correct. Make sure when you lift it up, the stick comes towards me, as you can see there, and the aileron on the other side goes the opposite direction. One other check we're supposed to look at down here is this nut right here. As long as there's thread showing out there, we should be good. If this nut were to start to back off, and that thread disappeared, uh, we might have a loose nut to contend with. Coming along down the flaps, it's the same kind of connection. There's a connection here, make sure that there's thread showing, 
and that that's tight. Also, while we're back here, we're gonna check the wheels. You can see we have registration marks on all those nuts to make sure none of those are backing off. This is kind of uh, tough to see. Well, it's impossible to see if you have wheel pants or wheel fairings, as the proper name is. Um, the wheel fairings make it look nicer, make it go a knot or two faster, but we can see the tire condition, we can see the brakes, we can make sure they're not wet looking and there's nothing dripping, and we can check out those registration marks on those nuts, make sure everything's tight. Brake line is clipped to the strut, so we're all good there. Moving along down here, static port. Have two of those, one on each side. Make sure that's clear, nothing in there. Up here, antenna, just give it a wiggle. This is our COM1 antenna down here. That's our COM2 antenna. And we look pretty good through this side. All right, coming around to the back of the plane, we wanna make sure that our strike plate, skid plate, whatever you wanna call it, is good and tight. We're gonna look at our rudder, make sure it moves, free and correct. Very nice. And also down here, we'll be checking again. There's some thread showing on that nut. That cable doesn't look frayed, so all that's good. While we're back here, we just make sure that the elevator works smooth and nice. And we'll check our static wick back here. All right, down the other side of the airplane is exactly the same thing. Static wick there. We're gonna check nut, make sure it's good. There's still some uh, thread showing. We know that's tight. We're gonna come along here. Static port, nice and clear. Move down the wing. And everything's moving and we've got some thread showing. Two static wicks, good. All our screws are on. Tie down, don't see any issues under the wing. And we'll move down the front. Stall strip, wing looks good. Greasy fingerprints, don't like those. And here, and again. This wheel, you can see our registration marks, everything is lined up. The tire has tread, looks good. Brake caliper looks fine. And while we're down here, we'll check the fuel. All right, fuel is blue, no water, no contaminants, and it smells like fuel. All right, we're coming around to this side. While we're over here, all the circuit breakers here, we're gonna make sure that all those are in, not popped. We'll come over here and we'll check our oil levels. And it's just below six quarts. That's generally what this plane likes. Anything over six quarts, it just takes the excess and spits it down the belly and makes a mess. All right, make sure that's tight, that's closed. Make sure that our cowling fasteners are in. All right, finally we're around front. We're gonna check our prop, make sure there's no cracks. Make sure there's no big dings that could cause a stress point where it might crack. All our fasteners are in our spinner. This guy looks good. Check and make sure our cooling intakes and our air intake are all open. All right, so now that we're done, we're just gonna go through our checklist, make sure we didn't miss anything. And if everything looks good, we'll be ready to go. All right, so the outside checklist is done. Last thing we're gonna do is we will pull the uh, tow bar off, take the chocks, put them over there where I can see them from the cockpit. That reminds me that I did take them out. And then we'll hop inside and uh, finish our checklist, finish our pre-flight and uh, get up in the air. All right, so we've uh, finished our exterior pre-flight. We've checked everything. We've gone over the checklist to make sure we didn't miss anything. Now we've come inside, check. Back door is closed and locked. I'm leaving the front canopy open. It's a little warm today. Passenger, we don't have to brief. We go down, flight flector, fuel control, trim wheel to take off. We've already done all that. We're gonna check and make sure these all move properly. They do. Put them in their starting point. We'll press enter here to make sure that that gets booting up. We're gonna check our alternate air, check our static, make sure it's in the right spot, and just continuing on down, making sure we didn't miss anything. And we turn the master switch on first rather than last, like they say, so this can be booting up and we don't have to sit here all day. All right, we are ready for engine start. So we're gonna put the canopy in, cooling gap. Got my pedals adjusted. All right, so we're doing a cold engine start. We have two different starts that we use. This warm engine we don't use. This engine is prone to uh, vapor lock, so we don't usually uh, use the warm engines, either hot or cold, so we're cold. So our procedure is gonna be prop is full forward. Throttle will be about to the L in the E, inch and a half is what they say. 
We'll have our engine page up. The fuel pump will go on. We're going to prime the engine for a count of five. Make sure the fuel is flowing right here. Four, five. Mixture back to just crack. And we'll start the engine. Clear prop. All right, and as soon as the engine fires, we'll push the mixture forward to keep her going. All right, so now that our engine is started, we came back, turned our alternator on, made sure that came alive over here with our amps and bolts. When all that settled down, we turned our avionics master on. We are now through our pre-flight on everything through engine start. Now we're just going to go through, we've got taxi, we've got autopilot test, apps, we're going to do all that, and then we're going to come back and check our checklist. So, autopilot test. Enter the heading bug. We're going to turn the autopilot on. We're going to go to heading mode. And we're going to turn the bug, see if the stick moves. If the stick moves, we can override it manually without turning it off. We pass the test. Autopilot. The second test is we're going to hold the autopilot disconnect button, move the electric trim, and make sure that the manual trim wheel does not move. And it's a release, it moves. We're going to cycle the flaps all the way down to landing. Confirm that they come down and then bring them back to takeoff. To make sure all our breakers are still in. Slow down the engine a little bit, about 1,000 RPMs. That's what we want for idle. Cessna 1, 6 November, you can continue with left traffic. Okay, continue left traffic one six November. All right, we're going to go to the auxiliary page, auxiliary chapter. I'm sorry, and we're going to check our GPS. Delta, clear to land, runway two. PS one, we have plenty. Two, zero, Papa Delta. PS one, we have plenty of satellites. We'll press the GPS two button again. Plenty of satellites. An item that's not in the checklist is we are going to go all the way to the last page of the aux chapter. Make sure all these check marks are green. Occasionally we'll get one, a red X at GDL 90, that's a traffic device failure. We would have to reset the transponder breaker yeah, to get that November, to come back. Gonna follow serious traffic. He's uh, about a mile final. Uh, to all right, so we're going right down right. our list. We've set okay, we're everything. Transponder is already to 1200. Pito, we're going to turn pitot heat on. Make sure the enunciator goes off and then turn it back off because we don't need it today. All right, my throttle check. Just going to take her all the way down, make sure the engine doesn't stall. Skyline 10 November, you can I turn base now, uh, number two, clear to land, or correction, clear for the option, runway two. Okay, we'll be at touch and go, and uh, we just pick the traffic up. All right, we're going to taxi down to the run-up area. We'll check back then. All right, we've taxied down to our run-up spot. We only have one run-up spot at this airport. They don't let us do it out on the taxiway. We have to do it on the ramp. We've come through our checklist. Up to this point, we're all good. All right, we'll come down, circuit breakers, flight controls, free and correct. All right, we've checked that. All right, so we're going to go to our engine page. We're going to keep our mixture at about two-thirds of the way. If you go full rich on this plane, especially when it's warm, you will fail the mag check. Oh, about two-thirds of the way seems to be the sweet spot. Oh, let's wrap up, 2,000 RPMs. All right, we're going to cycle the prop three times. Wait for that RPM drop. All right, just our throttle a little bit. All right, right there. So let's go left mag. All right, that's about 100 drop. Max drop is 175. Max difference between two is 50 RPM. So about 90 RPM, 1910. All right, back up to both. Over to right. And she settled out at about 1920. So 10 to 20 RPM different, that all checks. Back to both. And one last look, make sure everybody's in the green. Oil pressure, fuel pressure, flow, everything is good there. RPM is back. We've completed the pre-flight through the run-up. We are now ready to go flying and have fun.